there's a delightful New Year's Eve custom in Scotland called First Footing It. The idea is to try and be the first person to step across a friend's threshold to wish him a happy new year and to toast his health and happiness. That's what I want to do in this special New Year's program. Thanks for inviting me into your home to share this time of gratitude for the year that's soon to end and to claim that 1992 will be a joyous year for you. Next year is leap year, so there will be 366 days. On today's special New Year's program, I'm going to share the secret of how to experience joy in every one of those 366 days. Are you interested? Stay tuned as we join the worshiping congregation of the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood to get ready for the best year of our lives. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas celebration. The wonder and the beauty of Christmas lingers. Our homes are still decorated, as is the sanctuary here. But now our minds leap ahead to the new year, and we wonder, what can we expect? What can we hope for? I have selected a passage of Scripture from the 118th Psalm that will give us both a motto and a power to live in the new year. Listen to this. First, the first verse. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. And then from the 21st through the 24th verse, I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in a few days we'll celebrate the beginning of a new year. We look back over the year that's passed and have memories both of good things and fearful, troublesome things. We look forward to the new year and wonder, will it be any different? Will it really be a new year? Lord, make us new people for a new year. Bless us as we seek to understand your word and claim your promises that we will be able to look forward to the future as a friend. Bless us, gracious Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Have you read all your Christmas cards? It's taken me the days since Christmas to read all mine. As a matter of fact, I had stacks of them. But what a joy it was to read each one. Each card expressed the love and care and concern of the person who sent it. When I finished all my cards, I thought to myself, why don't we have New Year's cards? If I were to write a poem for a New Year's card, this is what it would be. Oh, it's not very good poetry, but at least it expresses the deep feelings of my heart. God has divided our life into years to set us free from our past fears. He gives us a New Year's inning so that we might have a brand new beginning. He opens his forgiving heart and gives us a brand new start. He goes before us to show us the way. He gives us grace for each new day. With his love to hold us fast, we have a peace that will last. Just live one day at a time, and you will have his power sublime. He is the faithful, just, and true. So, joyous New Year to you. Now, you note that I ended that by saying joyous New Year, not happy New Year. We'll hear a lot of that. 
Happy New Year, people will say. I want you to have a joyous New Year. Oh, what a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is dependent on circumstances, on the attitudes or moods of people, how things work out. But joy comes as a result of a profound experience of God's grace, knowing that we're loved and accepted and forgiven just as we are. And then, as a result of that, an artesian, never-ceasing flow of joy bubbles up. It radiates on our faces. It twinkles in our eye. It gives us a lilt to our step. It changes life. I want you to have a joyous new year. That may not be as easy as we think. <laughs> the other day, I asked a friend of mine, how are you? And he said, rotten. I said, really? He said, yeah, I've had a rotten day and I feel rotten. He said, as a matter of fact, it's been a rotten year. <laughs> Do you feel that way about 1991? Many of us uh, wonder about how bad a year could get and probably would chalk up 1991 as one of the worst. Then the man looked at me and he said, Lloyd, how do you get over having rotten days? And if I were to think about it, how could I have a year without rotten days? We sat and talked over a cup of coffee for a full hour. And what I said to him is essentially what I want to say to you. God has divided our life with the demarcation line of New Year so that we could uh, accept his absolution for the past and make some dynamic resolutions for the future. He wants us to clean out what's past so that we can take a new look at the future and make the future our friend. One of the best resolutions is written in a motto, and it was in the scripture reading that I read today. It's from the 118th Psalm. Now, you know that that was the last of the Hillel Psalms sung at the Feast of the Tabernacles. It's filled with gratitude to God, and it reaches a crescendo when the psalmist says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I suggest that that is a tremendous motto for this next year. If we could say that and believe it and live it every day of this new year, it would make all the difference in the world. But in order to understand it, we have to divide it into three parts. Let me do that with you for just a moment. First of all, this is the day. That reminds us that in any one day, that's all we've got. We should live in what Sir William Osler called daytight compartments. He first used that term when he was lecturing to medical students at the University of Yale. There he told them that they ought to live with intentionality and intensity inspired for each day as if that day were all they had. What a difference that makes. So very often we put off until tomorrow what we could experience today, or we carry with us the bad memories of the previous day, and it ruins the day. It makes what my friend called a rotten day. George Herbert said, we ought to undress our souls like we undress our bodies when we go to bed. I remember a man who, because of emotional difficulties, uh, lost contact with reality. And each night, he would go to bed with all of his clothes on. <laughs> I called on him once, early in the morning, see how he was, and there he was with all of his clothes on. Many of us are like that as we keep dressed up with all of the shabby clothes of yesterday. 
and we take them to bed with us and we worry over them and they ruin the next day. Has it ever happened to you? It has to me. The more I live trusting Jesus Christ, the more I realize that all I have is today and it can't be marred by what happened yesterday. I've got to forgive and forget and make a fresh start every day. It's a wonderful thing to think about, a new day, a new chance. But if each of us lived every one of the new days of this new year in that attitude, we would have the best year of our lives. I saw another friend of mine the other day, and he said, Lloyd, I hope 1992 is the best year of your life. Well, it's not going to be the best year of my life unless every day is the best day of my life. How about you? Now, let's press on. This is the day the Lord has made. Actually, when we look into the meaning of the Hebrew, it uh, really implies this is the day the Lord has acted. And it refers to the previous verses in which the Lord has established a cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. It is marvelous in our eyes. It's the Lord's doing. Now, a cornerstone holds two walls together. It becomes part of the foundation of a building. The psalmist realized that God had saved Israel, but these words, later interpreted by Christ, were about him, and he claimed to be the chief cornerstone. And over and over again in the New Testament, Paul and Peter referred to Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. It's when you experience Christ is the cornerstone of your life. You can say, this is the day the Lord has acted. Making Christ the cornerstone is the most crucial thing in having a great year, a great life, and a wondrous eternity. Without Him, we'll be out on a limb all the time. Now, beginning a new year, is a time to come back to Him. It's wonderful that Christmas and our time of recommitment at New Year is so close together. We can live with the warmth and power and grace and goodness of God all wrapped up in the Christmas season, a renewal of the grace of God through Jesus Christ, a realization of all that He has done for us, and then Fortified with that, we can look into a new year with new resoluteness and courage and strength. But in order to do that, a resolution must be made. We must resolve that Christ is going to be the Lord of our life and that we will depend on Him every day as the cornerstone of our lives. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. Then he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who lived for me and died for me. Once we have that kind of a commitment, then Christ becomes the focus of the year. The purpose of 1992 for you and for me is to come to the place where we know him better and better. When Paul encouraged the Galatians to root their lives in Christ, he also encouraged them to grow in Christ. When Christ is the cornerstone of our life, the image shifts and he comes to dwell in us, to make us like himself. Paul encouraged the Galatians to allow Christ to be born in them. He said, I am in travail until Christ is 
formed in you. 1992 is a year for spiritual formation, for the formation of Christ in us, until he captivates our thinking, until he controls our emotions and our feelings, until he radiates from our bodies, till he brings healing and strength into every moment of our life. We need to grow up in Christ. That's the purpose of this next year. And the other day, I was reading a newspaper when my three granddaughters were playing with their dolls. And Aaron said to Early, uh, Early, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they talked back and forth as they played with their young adult dolls. And then they started to giggle. And they said, I wonder what Papa wants to be when he grows up. <laughs> and so they came over and they pulled down the newspaper and looked me square in the eye and said, Papa, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, it was a challenge to answer that question. <laughs> you see, I've known Christ for 40 years, but I'm not grown up yet in him. I've got so much more to discover. And every day is a tremendous opportunity to grow in relationship with him to give him more and more of myself. And so we press on to the last part of this magnificent motto for a new year in the 118th Psalm. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, that last word is a mistranslation. It should be, I will rejoice and be glad in him. That's right. No one day is the basis of rejoicing. But have you ever gotten up and said, this is a special day for me. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in the day, and then find that you were disappointed in that day? So often we live with that terrible, confusion of entitlement. We think the world or the people around us owe us something. But when we come to the realization that the day isn't the source of our rejoicing and our gladness, but Christ is, what a difference it makes. We put the focus on Him and not on the circumstances in that particular day. We expect him to use what happens to us in the day for what he wants to have happen to us and through us. And here's the secret for a great life. Whatever God gives or takes away, he means for us and our growth. Sometimes the difficult things we face in a day are to enable us to know him better and trust him more, to grow in his grace and become the person he wants us to be. And the more we rejoice in him, the more he can pour his power into us and through us. Every day becomes exciting. If as you're getting up and then as you take 15 minutes to be quiet with him and listen to him, you begin to rejoice and be glad in him. And then the day looks entirely different. It's filled with expectation and excitement and hope. That's what it means to have a really joyous new year. In 1992, just trust him one day at a time, and he will give you power sublime. He is the faithful, just, and true. So, joyous new year to you.